you know us, then you know that this time of night on Fox 9 News at 9, we'd like to take a closer look at some part of the weather. Right, and since it is springtime, it can often be a little unsettled out there, and yeah. Scott's going to tell us why. That's right, instability. It's all about the instability. You know, in the wintertime, things are kind of just gloomy and gray, <laughs> and the clouds are layered, but you notice in the spring, you start to get the puffy clouds forming. There's a reason for that. You have to get air to rise. When air rises, the pressure in the upper atmosphere is lower than it is down here at the ground. There's no air when you get up to where the space shuttle's flying, right? So there's less and less air the higher you go. Well, pressure and temperature are directly proportional. That means if the pressure drops, the temperature drops. That's why it gets cooler as air rises. So when air rises, it gets cooler, and then the moisture that's uh, in the air condenses out and forms a cloud. So if it can cause the air to rise, you'll get the clouds and rain to form. So in the summertime, in the springtime, when the sun starts getting higher in the sky, the sun doesn't heat the air directly. It actually heats the ground. The ground warms up like a radiator, and the layer of air that's touching the ground warms and then rises. Cool air comes down to replace it, and as the day keeps going, the warm air rises higher and higher, and warm air rises and cools and makes clouds. So that's the basis to all weather. So you get more sunshine in the spring. You get more of the puffy clouds forming during the afternoon. So when you get that heated surface air, you can then cause all kinds of problems when you get thunderstorms forming. If there's cool air aloft, this warmer air is a lot warmer than the other air, so it tends to cool, causes a big storm to form. You can get that just from afternoon popcorn thunderstorms, that we call it. But you can also get another way to cause the air to rise. When you bring cold air, here's the cold front, the leading edge of that cold air. It's hugging the ground because it's heavier than the warm air, so it undercuts the warm air, causing the air to rise violently right at the front. And that's why you'll get numerous thunderstorms near a front. This is what we had when our strong cold front came through. We had strong thunderstorms roaring to the north. Then the front came through, and everybody got that wind. We had microbursts showing the down trees that we had, so we had all kinds of issues there. And the key is, while tornadoes peak in May, for us, tor uh, thunderstorms peak in July and August. So we haven't quite gotten to our thunderstorm season. So guys, something to look forward to. More storms and lightning on the way. Oh, don't tell the people of Prairie that, who are still without power tonight after Monday's blast. Oh, that was a big I know. One. And yeah. so, such heavy wind to bend that metal yes. like that. It had to be over amazing. 80 miles an hour at least. A, a, likely a microburst right in the right spot or the wrong yeah. spot. Goodness. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Well, the Internet is undergoing a pretty major facelift, but you likely won't notice any of the changes. It's all in an effort to make it bigger. Because if you can imagine this, the Internet was actually running out mm -hmm. of space. Let's check it out. That's right. The Internet had run out of room. Is that possible? Every device that connects to the Internet has a unique IP address. And right now, there's enough room online for about 4 billion addresses. But because of the surge in mobile devices that can go online, we're about out. Once this work is completed, there will be 340 trillion, trillion, trillion <laughs> available addresses. That's mm. crazy. Yeah. Such a massive changeover won't be finished overnight. Of course, it may take years before that work is complete. Well, Apple is set to stake its claim in a new area of the tech world tonight. It is working on its own program to compete with Google Maps. Right now, most iPhones have Google Maps as the default navigator. Analysts say it's a major power play as the two tech giants compete for users. Starbucks apologizing tonight after a venti-sized marketing mistake has Irish coffee fans foaming at the mouth. Twitter followers in Ireland recently received a tweet asking them what made them most proud to be hmm. British. Mm -hmm. Obviously, asking the wrong country is a mistake, but when you consider the long-running problems between the two nations, well, that's not so good. The tweet was up for hours before Starbucks realized its mistake and tweeted out an apology. Well, mistakes <laughs> happen. Well, coming up next in Tech It Out, it was a bumpy ride, but Space Shuttle Enterprise has completed its final voyage, and now it calls the Big Apple home. Variety Rock. Variety Rock. 1051. Always another great rock song.